So, do you know that we are going to disconnect your landline as well as your internet line from today's midnight for three to four weeks? Are you aware of this? Someone else was trying to take access to your internet. Your IP has been hacked by some foreigner hackers and they are considerably misusing your IP for some illegal purpose. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. If you're looking for my bank details... I can tell you I don't have money. But what I do have... are a very particular set of skills. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. So do you still want to scam me? Yes, show you in front of your own eyes that who are the people are trying to take access to your internet, okay? This scammer cold called me, claiming to be my internet service provider. And then we'll go ahead. Okay. Like, uh, which version? So which version of Windows? Windows 10, Windows 7, um, which one is it? I think this might be Windows 7, I'm not sure. Uh, do one thing, have a good look on the keyboard, okay? On the extreme left hand side, bottom corner, can you see the CTRL, the control key? Uh, control, yes, I do see it, yep. I fast forward the next section because it's only the scammer asking me to download and run the remote access software TeamViewer. TeamViewer have been quite receptive to the feedback that their software has been used in scams. And these days, if that software spots a connection from India, the connection is blocked and a warning is displayed on the victim's computer. So to work around this update, often the scammer these days will ask for the victim to connect to their computer first. And once connected, they will ask the victim to press a button to reverse this communication. But of course, once I'm connected, I don't have to do what the scammers just asked me to do. It gives me an opportunity to download his files and lock him out of his computer. Yeah, now type, it. Now type the new ID. It's 285. 285, yeah. 258. 258, yep. 783. 783. Yeah, below that you'll see a blue box written connect. Click on connect. Connect, yeah. Oh, right, yeah. It's now, is it asking for a password? It is asking for a password, yeah. Yeah, type in the password. It's 7921. 7921. Yeah, click on log on. Log on. Yeah, just wait. Don't touch, don't touch anywhere, don't touch anywhere. On the top, you'll see three, uh, three options like action, view, communicate, okay? Yeah. Do okay. one thing. Click yeah. on communicate. Click on communicate. Uh, is it down at the bottom there somewhere? First things first, I've got to blank out a screen and lock him from his keys. So click right. on communicate. Uh, hold on, I'm trying now to find it. Now click on switch side with... Sorry? Yeah, I'm just trying to find it. Click on communicate. Yeah, on the on the top, on the top, middle of the top, you'll see. Yeah. Three options, I like think... action, view, communicate. Okay. Click I on think... communicate. Now click on switch side with partners. Right, okay. I can... Don't click anywhere. I okay. switch side with partners. Right. I've think now that I've locked him from his keyboard and mouse, it's time to root around his PC. Did you, uh, did, you find, uh, did you click on communicate? Did you click on switch side with partners? Yeah, I did. I, I think it did anyway. Just hold just hold. Okay. Sorry? I, I think just it did. Hold just hold I'm not really that good with computers, so maybe you just can hold help. Sure. Just hold on. Okay. Just hold on, sir. I'll transfer the call to my senior technician. He'll have a talk with you. Just have a talk with him, okay? Okay. All right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, thank you, Ben Hold, sir. This is Wilson, and I'm the senior technician out here. How are you doing today? Uh, not too bad, yeah. Um, can, I don't know what's happening here, but. Maybe I've hit the wrong button or something, have I? Okay. Now that I've downloaded his files, it's time to lock him out of his computer by using the command syskey. I think... Now, can you see your ID and the password once again? Um, yep. Syskey command will prevent him from logging back into his machine without my password. Oh, I did. Uh, I think there was some problem with those, that ID. That's right. 756, sir. 756. 756. Not right. 46. Okay. Um, sorry. Not very good with these. I, I'm just repeating the numbers once again. It's one one nine. Yeah. Seven five six. 
bingo, I've locked him out of his machine. If he wants to log back in again, he's going to have to know the password I just typed. Um, right. Okay. I hunt around his machine a little more to see if there's any files I missed. I don't think so. Connect. Okay. Um, it said... Uh, I don't know what this is. Um, now can, connect. Now can you just read me the numbers, what you have written there? Yeah, it's 116. 406. I have a look carefully at the software which is installed on the scammer's machine. There's not really of much interest other than a bit of pirated software which allows him to view colleagues' screens. He also runs ByteFence anti-malware. Sir, like... Right. I fire up his browser to see if I can find anything interesting in his history. Okay. Cached in his browser is the software that he uses to contact his victims. It's called VICI Dial. Like, uh, can you just tell me the number, uh, ID, what you have written? Because like it was not. I try to find a little bit more information, but I'm locked out by a username and password. Okay. I've got 119-756-406 and then it says password. Yes. Like Is you haven't given a click on connect, sir. Right, let me try again. Yep. Um, although I already know his IP address from Wireshark, I type in whatismyip.org and check what the result shows in the browser. It matches exactly what Wireshark says. At this point, the scammer gets a little bit frustrated and decides to disconnect me. However, he hasn't seen what I've done on his computer, so he allows me to reconnect. Uh, all right, so you just, you just do one thing, sir, okay? You just do one thing. Don't touch your computer. Just leave it, okay? Just okay. leave it. Right. Okay. Now what can you see? So it's disconnected and it says... But he's still desperate to get my bank details. So, once again, he reads out another TeamViewer ID. And it says password. Yeah. It's 9956. Yeah. Okay, 9956. Yes. Now, just look at the top. There is an option called Communicate. Communicate. This turns out to be a different PC, so it gives me an opportunity to download yet more files. Yeah, I think I've hit Communicate. So once again, I black screen him and lock his keyboard and mouse. Side with partners. Okay, that's what I've done. Switch side with partner. Yeah, that, I've got that. This time, there looked to be a lot of interesting files saved on the desktop. I download all of these. Give a click and communicate first. Give a click and communicate. Right. That's what I've, I've got that. And then give a click on switch side with partner. I continue to play yeah. dumb. Uh, it says, oh right, up at the top. If you want to see what all these files are, please jump to the 15 minute mark. Right. And then switch side with partners. Right, I've got it. Sorry, I was clicking down at the bottom. I was looking for something at the bottom. No. Just focus on the top. Just focus on the top, on the middle portion. I have a glance at one or two of the files that contain online banking information of some of his victims. Now that I have all of his files, I decide to let him connect to my computer. It says computer sign. Oh, sorry, I see it. Switch sides with partner. I see that now. I quickly hide all of the files that I've just downloaded and let him have the access he requested. Is that it now? It says BT Technical Server. Uh, no, it's not. Hang on. Now the scammer roots around my file system. He's not going to find much because it's a virtual machine which I've set up specially for scammers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, he does notice something called banking and passwords yes. and he attempts to open these files. Okay. If he had ran these on his own computer, I would have had direct access to his PC. But I'd already downloaded all of his files anyway. Uh, your computer screen is black? It is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they are trying to access your internet and all the stuff. 
Okay. He looks at my browsing history, I guess, in the hope to see some banking logins. Unfortunately for him, it's completely blank. Um, browsing the web and that sort of thing. How do you know what okay, the problem is? So like you don't do. It, all right, so you don't do much more things on this internet. Not on the internet, no. Just like Facebook and that sort of stuff. Okay, all right. And like, how many devices have been connected with the same internet? Um, probably just but like one or two, like a, an iPad and an iPhone and stuff. Okay, so that means you normally do from iPad and like, uh, uh, from do iPad, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So what, what's the problem? Can you see what the problem right. is? Uh, yes, so now we can identify the problem like there is uh, 15 hackers was found onto your banking. Right. And like on your Facebook, there is three hackers, and 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 all the much more hackers was already there on your internet. Mm -hmm. So I believe like apart from you, somebody else also uses this computer. Um. Well, sometimes my family would, but really, it's usually just me. Mhm. Mm and do you do any kind of online shopping or banking in this computer? Um. Yeah. Well, occasionally I will. Yeah. Mhm. Mm so this is really what the scam is about. He wants to get all of my login details from my bank so that he can log in and clear it out. <clears throat> now, can you see over here, there's lots of local address, foreign address and states are there, correct? Uh, yeah, uh-huh. I'll fast forward this bit where the scammer runs Netstat and Eventfear in an attempt to convince me that there are hackers connected. All right. Now, all right. Now on the note, but okay. Now just write it down all the website's name, whatever you do on this internet, like on your iPad or on this computer. Just write it down all the name of the all the websites, okay? So you can able to protect your website and we can provide all the securities and all like everything on your notepad, like on your website, okay? Um, that's that's the ones I would usually use. Uh huh. The most of the time, you uh, use these four things. He's a bit disappointed. I don't mention online banking. And do you do any kind of banking or any kind of financial things? Um, usually just on my phone. But you're using the same internet, right? Oh yeah. Uh huh. Okay. So just yeah. writing down that as well. Oh yeah, well on my phone. Yeah, so phone. Yes, sir. Oh, sorry. Phone bank. So, uh, website's name, not the phone bank like that, just the name of the website. Oh, right. Like, hello? Are you still there? Hello? Hi, hello? Hello? Hello. Hello there. Yes, sir. I'm so, so sorry. Okay. okay. All right. No now, problem. over here, okay, now you have written the phone bank, right? But uh, uh, yeah, yeah. just type the name of the website. I'll fast forward this part because it's just the scammer trying to convince me that I've got problems with websites by using the W3C validator. It will always show errors for any website you type in. He types barclays.com into this validator and as predicted, it shows some errors. He goes on to explain that because Barclays.com is showing errors, it must be down to hackers on my network. How do I connect? Uh, don't do anything, sir. Don't do anything, sir. I get bored and attempt to make a connection back to the scammer's PC. I do this a number of times before the scammer realizes I'm up to no good and he terminates the connection. What do I do next? Hello, are you still there? Hello? Hello, are you still there? I warn him that he's been syskeyed before I start to have a look at the files that I've downloaded in detail. Amongst the files, I find screenshots of at least three different Metrobank users. 
Not only are the screenshots there, but the actual login details are there as well. Their username, security passphrase, and other numbers. It's enough to give full access to the bank accounts. There's also a couple of screenshots and what I'm guessing are victims that they want to follow up on. So that evening I contacted Metro Bank who asked me to put in writing what I had recorded. This is a copy of the email that I sent to their fraud division. They were quick to respond and locked all of the accounts which were affected. Among the other files I downloaded was a list of salaries, sadly only with four names but it was enough to tell me exactly how many people were in this call centre, what their rates of pay were, and who had scammed the most over the last couple of months. But one of the most damning files that I found was a list of call records for one particular day at the end of October. You can see from the timestamps of this file just how many calls they make in a very short period of time. They meticulously record how many customers weren't interested, how many were answer machines, and how many victims they reached. I've passed this and all of the other files on to Action Fraud, who I hope will be able to use it to break this gang of scammers. As always, if you like these kind of videos, please do subscribe, and remember to hit that bell icon for any updates. I also have a Twitter feed, at JimBrowning11, and if you'd really like to sponsor me, I also have a Patreon account. Details in the description.